Hello friends, um, yesterday was a public holiday here in the UK because of the day of national mourning to mark the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II and I became aware of the fact that around the world millions of people would be tuning in to watch a live event through television or tuning in over the internet watching this live broadcast and it made me think about my time studying theatre and film and TV and how the, the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II was a, a live event that was focused on very much as a matter of study in terms of what makes up a live broadcast. But what was even more interesting to me was this time the fact that in a secular, largely secular society, for many people, it was a focus on an event that may have been strange to them because it was in essence, a ritual. And I know what you're thinking, maybe. Today, people talk about their daily rituals. They talk about how they have a shower, how they buy a coffee in the morning, or they get the subway or whatever they do to get to work. And they talk about those being their rituals. And in a secular sense, that doing of something on repeat, people regard as a ritual. But for us, in the religious sense, Ritual is a very particular art form. It is a, a form of worship in which the past is made present through a performance. Through a performance such as in the Catholic Mass, which we would celebrate as Catholics. Now, yes, Jesus said, do this in memory of me, and it's the recollection of something that happened in the past, but it's in the making present that we really experience something which is liminal, a liminal experience. In other words, something that is lifted up from the everyday, something that crosses that threshold, that's on the threshold between our existence here and the supernatural existence. The everyday or quotidian is lifted up to the level of the liminal, just about to cross the threshold. So it's interesting that everybody were, would be tuning in, and perhaps for some who don't really attend any place of worship, this would be the first time seeing the way in which people behave in a church, albeit that would be a very high Anglican form of worship. Um, but it's the first time that they would maybe have heard the sacred scriptures from the Bible being read as well. Now, what interests me is also that um, through ritual, we glimpse the origins of theatre. And as an arts practitioner specialising in faith-based theatre, I'm only too aware of the great debt that the theatre owes to religion. Because, in fact, the, the theatre as we know it originated in the cult of Dionysus in ancient Greece. It was a form of pagan worship, in fact, of the pagan god Dionysus, the god of wine and party, essentially. But... Um, the reason that the Greek amphitheatres are circular in shape originated from a circular dance called the Dithyram, which was performed on the threshing floor as people um, worshipped the god of wine. And so um, we can see how the theatre space evolved uh, and how they became an audience space and a performance space. And theatre in this country, in Britain, um, began actually with religion as well because really in the middle ages all theatre was religious all theatre was uh, catholic by nature here in the uk because it began with the liturgy in fact the earliest recorded theatre in in the uk is in fact the the easter vigil the the the, the priest calls out Lumen Christi and, and from within the deacon or the altar service chant back Deo Gracias, the knocking on the door. It's very dramatic. And that evolved into preaching the gospel, preaching, opening up the scriptures, the stories of the Bible to a largely illiterate audience through performance. And so plays were performed that took on stories from the Bible and they were performed by ordinary people people with everyday jobs, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Um, and the, the old-fashioned word in the Middle Ages for your, for your trade, your profession, was your mystery. So we hear the word mystery applied to these plays. They are mystery plays. 
And that's because you would maybe have um, a particular guild of workers who would take on a particular story. So the carpenters might be doing the story of Noah's Ark and um, someone else, the, the, the local um, bakers, might be doing something on uh, the story of Esau and Jacob or something like that. But also, um, as well as being uh, performed out in the streets and being taken from the church, these also um, were performed within a church space, within that sacred space of the church, and areas within the church had significance. So you might have had um, an area of the church designated to be purgatory, an area designated to be heaven, an area designated to be hell, an area designated to be the earth, the Garden of Eden, whatever it would be. And so they were performed in a space that was um, religious, a church space. So I was thinking yesterday, as, as people watched this um, sacred performance, and I don't mean anything disrespectful by saying that, a sacred performance, not a profane one, a sacred one, um, I wonder what they were thinking. Because today we have also an audience in a secular society that is illiterate in a different sense. We are well-read, we can educate ourselves, we have access to, to so much information on the internet. But when it comes to knowledge of God, when it comes to knowledge of scripture, when it comes to knowledge about faith, people are quite often really rather illiterate and don't really know where to begin. So my hope is that perhaps the funeral of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II would have motivated some people to look a little bit deeper at their own worship as well as at their prayer life as we focused on the death of someone and their eternal reward. So I hope that um, for you this maybe makes some sense, rings some, some bells for you in your own life and you know I hope that something here was of interest in knowing that that the two things, theatre and um, worship, liturgy, are not unrelated. They are very, very close. And hence we get words like the, the priest performs the sacraments in the Catholic Church in persona Christi. And, and it's loaded with significance. And it doesn't make it any less real. In fact, it makes it more real. Um, and it doesn't make it any less sacred. But it is a type, a particular type, of performance, a particular type of art form that I wonder if until yesterday the world had maybe forgotten about. Maybe some people will go back to church because of it. I don't know. I hope so. God bless. <laughs>